Good afternoon. On behalf of VMware and CIO leader, it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's CIO conversation. Joining us today are Mr. Anand Hatkaunkar, CIO Asia, Whirlpool Corporation. Mr. Naveen Gulati, Group CIO, Girnar Soft. Mr. Chandra Kishore Prasad, Executive Director, IT, Railtail Corporation of India. Mr. Yogesh Zope, CDO and Senior Vice President, Bharat Forge. Mr. Ajay Bakshi, Global Transformation Leader, Xerox. Uh, Mr. Narhari BL, Head IT Digital Transformation, Titan Company. Welcome everybody. And thank you for making the time to participate in this discussion on the topic, Finding Your Path to Application Modernization. The reason why we are talking about this topic is that today the success of an organization is dependent on how well its business applications can service stakeholder needs. So not only applications drive revenue generation and customer engagement, but they also play a big role in competitive differentiation. However, the move to uh, you know, cloud technologies and a mobile first paradigm implies that IT leaders need to rethink how applications are built, operated, managed, and protected. So with agility, flexibility, and scalability becoming very critical business needs, it's being imperative how to modernize our applications. So to talk a little bit more about, uh, so in our discussion today, we will aim to look at the factors that are propelling the need for modernization of applications, some of the major challenges that are there, and how IT leaders can successfully manage the transition to new software architectures. So to set the context for today's discussion, I would like to invite Kip Cole, Vice President, VMware Tanzu Sales APJ, to share his thoughts on the state of application modernization. Kip has many years of experience in the technology sector and has previously worked with SAP, Cisco, and Sybase in the Asia-Pac region. So over to you, Kip. Yeah, and thank you very much indeed, and good afternoon, gentlemen. It's a really great pleasure to be with you this afternoon, especially since in the most challenging business and societal context we've seen probably in our lifetimes, we find ourselves in a situation where applications are now very clearly front and center in the minds of all of the organizations we work for, not because our business leaders are in love with technology, but because the question of how do we continue to deliver great customer outcomes when there are uncertainties around travel and engagement, ask the question, what do we do differently? And it's very clear to all of you, I'm quite sure on this call, that leadership of organizations, both public and private, recognize that improving their applications portfolio is a significant priority. In fact, uh, of the research that we've sponsored, 78% of board level respondents say improving applications portfolios is a top, pro uh, top priority. But if you look on the other side of that coin, half of those organizations haven't made the kind of progress that they were really hoping was going to happen. So the question I think at the center of our conversation today is in part, why? If this is a significant priority that has strong linkage to business outcome, but at the same time, we haven't made substantial progress in as many cases as customers would like, then, then what's underpinning that? Well, I, I think at the beginning, it's simply the tension between the different priorities depending on the stakeholder in the organization. If I'm sitting in the CEO shoes, then the, the overall consideration here is, how do I implement my business transformation strategy? Whatever is appropriate to my industry, to my organization and my geography, that's the lens of my focus. Now, we might say that digitization is a central strategic plank of the majority of organizations today. And, and that's probably true, I think, in every customer conversation that I've had but it's not immediately obvious to every CEO how that translates into execution. So there are many organizations whose transformation strategies have founded on the rocks of linking strategy to outcome. If I'm in line of business, I've got a, a strong business imperative that's very often driven by faster time to market. It's better customer engagement. It's driving more digital distribution and supply chain. And that's a very practical outcome and it's very investment driven. There is no outcome to faster time to market that is done by simply reducing cost, which is interesting because the pressure on the CTO, most typically from the board, 
is to say, we want you to be agile, innovative, and we want you to reduce costs. And as many of you work in this domain, you know vastly better than I do that this is a situation which is full of conflict. Uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate the guidance. Do you want the innovation or the reduction of cost? It's very difficult to do both at the same time. Of course, given an infinite time, we can achieve all of those. And as the CTO, you are always seeking to innovate in technology. And that innovation in technology is definitely intended to serve the business. And therefore, we see significant moves towards more agile software development technologies, move towards more elastic compute platforms, whether that's on-premise or in the public cloud. And yet, at the same time, uh, all of us know that today, still the majority of investment goes to sustaining and operating the existing technology landscape. And we all carry significant technology debt. So very challenging to be a CTO today, especially since at the other end of that chain, the CFO's goal is really clear, reduce TCO. Every transaction, every procurement, every project is expected to achieve that. So these are all very reasonable expectations from stakeholders. There is nothing I can look at here that says that's an unreasonable expectation. The challenge is how do we bring this together into a landscape which is manageable, that has good risk, good agility, good TCO reduction. And I think the answer to that is really at the center of what the CIO is most typically dealing with today. And it brings into focus the conversation around applications, at least in my mind, because increasingly in the digital world, what links business objectives and operational outcome are applications. So that may seem trivially obvious when expressed in this manner, but given that the heritage of the IT industry is founded on technology that the business doesn't always understand, this, this recognition that IT is now no longer simply the operations of the business, but is the deliverer of business outcome and strategy creates a great deal more responsibility for all of us in this conversation today. I think also significantly improved opportunities to contribute, to be recognized and to grow careers as well. So the lens that we bring to this conversation is recognizing applications are at this nexus between business objectives and operational outcome. And it involves, depending on the priorities of your organization, everything from the platform conversation through the delivery of creation of, or simply the execution of applications. So, so how does that work practically? How do we bridge between this idea of investing for innovation and the reduction then of uh, total cost of ownership. And I, I think one way to look at it is, is through this lens. There are traditionally in the investment posture of many organizations a view that technology, at least in the last 10 years, has primarily been about optimization. Optimization means how do we improve existing process, make existing business operations more effective? How do we lower the risk and compliance or lower the risk and improve compliance of delivering? And as a result, we would expect to get a TCO reduction. And I don't think there's a single board on this planet that doesn't want that path to continue. The challenge now in this new world is the idea that in addition, we want to also innovate, which is much more of a conversation around new process, strategic imperatives, it's about making investments that have a higher risk and a potentially higher return or higher likelihood of failure. So that's innovation. And I think what's becoming now clearer to many organizations is the idea that bridging these two together is recognizing that the, the improvements in TCO through optimization can be a source of funding to drive and fuel innovation. And that this can become, in the right circumstances, a virtuous circle for many organizations. Now, if you're a CIO or a CTO, one of your challenges is that you're given the task to reduce TCO, but you're not given the benefit directly. You still have to compete for the sources of funding to drive innovation. My argument, perhaps for another conversation, would be how do we recraft the role of the CIO to be more all-encompassing 
of a total funding model that it creates the opportunity for you to better balance in your own domain optimization and innovation. But in reflecting now, especially in the last year, in the last two years uh, since the arrival of our good friend COVID-19, uh, the number of new projects that have started, the level of focus on application introduction to support strategic change has gone up significantly. You, of course, have all seen that in your own businesses. And it's given us an opportunity to reflect on what has allowed an organization to be successful in balancing these two priorities. What are the factors that more likely underpin a successful investment in app modernization or in business innovation. And ironically, given that I work for a software vendor, my observation is that it is very unlikely that the key indicator is the technology that determines whether or not the project is successful. It is far more likely to be aligned with the strength and clarity of leadership, the collaborative culture, the focus on managing change, the appetite for taking risk, and of course, as always, underpinning that, how do we create a governance environment that ensures that what we deliver is what we set out to deliver in a way that fits within the overall framework and risk appetite of the organization? And so for me, it's particularly interesting to see that as customers seek innovation through transformation of application platforms, we tend to let ourselves down by lacking the linkage between those investments and the direct business outcome, and by not focusing enough on the qualities and attributes necessary to make these projects work, i.e. leadership, culture, change management, risk-taking, and governance. Now, what we know on the other side of the coin is that when those things come into play, when the outcome expected is clearly linked to business strategy, the execution is empowered, the culture is collaborative and the right technologies are deployed, then there is a very strong linkage to very strong positive outcomes. Whether that's taken uh, from an operational point of view or from a developer productivity point of view, and we are increasingly seeing customers focused on these metrics of outcome because developer productivity is directly linked to introducing new applications, transforming existing ones, and improving platforms. We see significant improvements in managing the risk and compliance, and particularly the security posture of applications in production and new applications being developed if there's the appropriate focus on the systems and processes to do that. Now, depending on your organization, its place in the market and the priorities it sets itself, there is still the answer to be, to be uh, created, which says, well, what do I do first? Uh, do I seek to redevelop all of my applications to be contemporary technology delivering new digital outcomes for customers? Well, unless you're a born in the cloud organization or you've just created a new startup uh, with significant funding, then of course we live with the landscape we already have. And so the last comment that I'd like to make before we start our conversation is that we recognize, as I'm sure you do too, that for every application that we have currently in deployment, we are planning to deploy or we're expecting to build, there are different approaches to modernization to ensure that we are linking to these outcomes that we're after. For instance, having spent a wonderful 10 years at SAP, I think I can say with some conviction the priority to take and containerize an SAP ERP platform and deploy it in the public cloud simply to deliver the same business benefits you're getting today is probably not the best use of shareholder funds. It may be, I don't suggest it won't be, but I don't think that's likely to be the priority for most of you. And similarly, if you look at your core finance systems or your core HR systems, then re-implementing those and rebuilding them from scratch, probably not in scope. My point being that as you look at the landscape, what we found creates a framework for guidance that creates the best clarity, strategy around optimize or innovate, and to create a direction around the path forward is to look at the existing application portfolio in the context of innovation strategies and ask the question, is this an application that I should retain and simply optimize? Is this one that is better because it requires scaling that I should rehost or migrate? 
Is this one that's critical to my business strategy, but is not fulfilling its promise? Perhaps I should replatform or even retire. And of course, at the very peak of innovation is the idea that building new applications is a new form of competitive advantage. And as we look across that landscape, this is helping customers simplify making good business decisions, good investment decisions, and good innovation decisions. So thank you for uh, allowing me to present my, uh, my thesis on app modernization, and I look forward uh, to our conversation for the rest of our time together. Thank you, uh, Kip, for you know uh, succinctly presenting some of those uh, ideas and observations. I'm sure, like you said, it's a thesis, and we could discuss this for a really long time. And I'm sure everybody has views on them. So, but thank you so much for you know uh, those points. So, let me start off the conversation today. Uh, you know, uh, asking the uh, CIOs here. You know, uh, in your view, you know what is propelling the need for application modernization in your organizations? So. What, what would be the one or two main things that which are propelling application modernization? Maybe I'll start with Mr. Prasad. So Mr. Prasad. Uh, yep, uh, one is a faster uh, uh, speed. time. Yeah, so when we talk about uh, uh, application modernization, um, definitely uh, the new applications uh, we are, uh, since it has to be deployed, the expectations are that it should be deployed off yesterday. So uh, uh, the faster deployment, uh, the cycle time, uh, reduction cycle time, and all those things is one of the factor. Second factor uh, affecting this is uh, definitely the availability and the resiliency of the application. Um, this, the need for the application to scale faster. So uh, primarily these are the two uh, uh, requirements uh, which are this will accelerating the uh, app modernization. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Prasad. I'd like to ask Anand. Anand, in, in your organization, what's the compelling need for application modernization? I think if I really look across, I mean, it is not just about uh, the need. I mean, this is like your regular part of or way of life to really look at because the technology obsolescence, we all know, is pretty high. I mean, every three to five years, if you really look at in terms of applications, the capabilities, the advancements are kind of moving leaps and bounds. And that's where you want to really have that competitive advantage coming out from what you actually use uh, from the organization standpoint. So that remains as an inherent part for looking at application modernization, uh, even at Whirlpool. The second piece that actually has also accelerated is the pandemic and actually the demand from the consumers wherein you go in the no touch world as much as you can and people really want to do transactions without having a touch or feel which was kind of prime requirement earlier now that becomes as a secondary one so that's where I think there is another need that comes up from application modernization that you really start looking at. So those are the two key drivers in my mind that come to the top of my mind. Thanks, Anand. I, I would also like to ask uh, Naveen. You know, Naveen represents a more new age company. You know, is there something which is driving application modernization in your organization? Uh, yeah, hey. uh, thanks, Giri. A very relevant question to us, especially being in a B2C space. So a uh, couple of key factors that have been primarily dri driving app modernization at our end. Uh, one, of course, <clears throat> it's a mindset that, uh, and these numbers also speak for itself, but if you really want to get a true flavor out of a cloud hosting, that's not a lift and shift model. It's actually with the app, app modernization. When you have containers running in, when you have Docker's running in or microservice services based applications running in, Right, that's where you get the real essence of cloud out. And that really brings your cost down. So, you know, Kip uh, shared it very beautifully that the cost that you bring down from your operations is the fund that you get for your innovations. So modernization is, is the biggest, biggest factor that helps there. Uh, second is a business requirement. Uh, during COVID, we saw a three, three and a half times surge in our traffic. And uh, we could handle that because we were in an auto scaling mode. 
but that still monolithic to a large extent and we care of our test for the next for the next search and so the modernization is the only way that we can handle otherwise our cost will burn us down so mr sonare can you mute yourself please mahalakshmi la bolta yeah right so uh, key key factors for us have been this so we are preparing ourselves for a larger traffic uh, at uh, even at better cost than where we are today right and second of course that's that's where the the future is yeah thank thanks navin and so you know uh, let me come to the next question i think keep uh, alluded to this that you know uh, Uh, one of the things about uh, application governing application modernization is the availability of money and you know to be able to fund it and so i want to ask mr ajay bakshi uh, that you know how do you create a justification for application modernization thank you gire hello all i just want to clarify before i start that i am talking on my own behalf with 26 years of experience and my organization being a listed one has nothing to do so these are my opinions and statements specifically for this thing that we are doing how do we justify application modernization before i touch that point just want to make one or two more points on application side of things and also to the first point that what are we doing as such so number one our business is driven by customer needs so obviously the customer needs fulfillment at any point of time is the first thing which drives that and second is to improve our back end efficiency within the service side of the domain to make sure that all data points are available easily to the people and everything is there now in the justification side there are two things let me start with a small antidote so co is asking the cio hey man why are we having thousands of applications what are we doing about it everybody says so many applications are in our company so many servers so many applications to log in and all that and cio says can we start seeing what applications are running and what business processes are because that is a direct reflection of what businesses processes are defined eventually they result into application side of things and if and here is a what to say dictonomy an it side will say please specify your requirements give a sign off on your requirements and those are set at one point time it is a static thing you sign off a document make your brds after three months the business says i need another i need another it will say what is happening define your requirements so this has been a classic case so actually if you have a need for anything to do it starts immediately from the business requirement side of it any business requirement has to come along with its own funding source that is one part of it now second situation business is not coming to you you yourself are thinking to modernize your back end landscape you want to reduce your servers you want to go on cloud you want to bring in application features then obviously the it division has to come up with a business case which justifies it and there are so many ways to do it one is of course the time motion study that you do some are intangible some are tangible but i would say in most way that is where we say a good cio also has to be a good communicator not only a technology guy he also has to walk the line of business and then make sure that the is when goes to board for whatever investment and actually cios should be able to manage with they don't need millions and billions frankly if you know your inventory is well which is a challenge and with the what to say shadow it also coming in this business inventory goes for a toss and business keeps creating some applications which are running on their shop floor some issue happens then only it is remembered as such i have a problem and then when you go in deep you realize oh somebody created it where is that guy he left the organization or oh, this was a shop floor initiative we created something but and then it has to bring in uh, the business analyst and guys to understand the whole process around it to make sure that it gets married into your main integral system so if you really i think it's a skill as well as a talent 
how to justify your case for uh, justifications on the side and i am sure in years i have seen the whole environment getting shifted when we started our career that thing was very difficult it backend was just a service and all that so i think we need to of course have the skill talent business need to justify what improvements are you bringing with every in say dollar invested in thank thank you ajay i think you talked about a very important point and i think kip also mentioned it so i want to ask mr yogesh zope about this you know kip mentioned that you know perhaps it's not the best idea to modernize something like an sap installation or some of the back end stuff but what's your view on that i mean do those need modernization as well when i reflect towards my organization our strategy normally is to largely move towards off the shelf products and uh, like sap or then for hrms some product then shop for plm and then for uh, even for uh, industrial iot or industry 4.0 we went with ptc thing works platform now uh, i'll say there are some applications and uh, while i was also started we started understanding about uh, appli- application modernization very recently and then we started analyzing our portfolio overall portfolio of non of the shell products so of course there are few it can't be there can't be no manufacturing organization which is in existence for 60 years and don't have <laughs> not of the shell products of course there are some very business critical applications running on uh, uh, various softwares and that's where we started analyzing overall application portfolio in terms of infrastructure whether these is it possible to move on cloud unfortunately some of them are very defense specific and then with due to some agreements it is practically impossible to move on public cloud but then private cloud of course we can create and that's where we started our journey of at least first having the application on consolidated one platform now we started realizing that the, the uh, application should be cloud native and uh, uh, at least move towards server serverless architecture and uh, whether that will be relevant when when we started discussing about relevance we st- uh, one thing we realized was okay we are, we do achieve our sls in terms of uh, support to the business but then do we uh, are we really able to give the business benefit with respect to application many time no so the, the thing which even kit was saying about speed agility scalability even the re- resilience and uh, again reliability of the application from that perspective what are we doing about it and that's where we started rethinking strategy for some of the applications but then by and large we have decided that we should have the application strategy where uh, we don't develop much internally unless it is mandatory and it, unless it is very specific to our environment because we are manufacturing company we are not it company and again we are in very specific b2b business where uh, we don't have direct uh, consumer uh, interface and we are uh, say second most important thing in our case is we are total uh, technology business uh, engineering technology business may we can't uh, have the may even customer interfaces are all together different in our kind of industry so in our case when we talk about it more uh, uh, aspect come from the speed perspective only means how fast you are able to deliver the product how fast you are able to change uh, the agility aspect of it also and then being a defense sensitive company defense business uh, uh, now the security plays most most vital role means many times it becomes show stopper for some of the applications but then that's the guideline we are following thank you uh, thank you mr zope so uh, mr narhari you are uh, you know responsible for uh, you know digital transformation at uh, titan company so uh, as part of your digital transformation you are probably also looking at application modernization so what are your thoughts you know about modernizing certain application sure thanks kiri and good afternoon to all of you good afternoon i think um, we in titan uh, as the company starts maturing the company starts to become younger and younger 
and uh, it is uh, we are a very uh, retail oriented company we are a manufacturing oriented company we are a brand company we have b2b we have b2c so the complexities are many and we are having multi categories so right from watches to jewelry to eyewear to uh, sarees and dress and so on and so forth so with this being to there the complexity keeps increasing and we have to have work according to the consumer sentiments so every quarter every month every week we have to release newer versions of applications which are newer features which are required for the customers both in the digital form as well as in the on on offline channel as well and an experience is something that we will bring as a, one of the key differentiation between when the people try to come to us for purchase so if you have to create that experience the back end or the infrastructure or the digital or the technology needs to support today that has been one of the biggest key differentiation and we in titan have ventured for this consolidation as well as virtualization 15 years back this is the 15th year that we are with vmware so we had started this as one of the pioneers in india in 2007 and uh, we have several applications everything on the vmware and uh, today we are also looking for multi tier capability while we have high availability the app modernization and continuous change is going to be the order of the day and it is the uh, success mantra that every company should be embraced for and only then they can be up to date according to the consumer's expectations and we can be able to match the consumer sentiments so that is how we give prominence and it is a continuous effort we are always in wip and we will continue to be in wip thank you mr narhari so you know and i, I like to invite in mr balakrishnan to share his views mr balakrishnan is from geogh uh, financial services again you know a completely different vertical so what is your view about you know application modernization and where are you as a company in that uh, uh thank you gedidar uh, uh georgit financial services is a retail uh, financial services organization so naturally customer expectation is uh, very important for us so today um, is customer is expecting something which is uh, ease of use and uh, also the data logistics uh, should be simpler all those things and uh, the millennials uh, have a, a wonderful experience on social media and other things mobile application etc so without such interface a retail business may not work so application modernization is a continuous journey for us then uh, uh, the second aspect of it uh, see we being into financial services there are security regulatory constraints are there so if uh, if a free access or a or an e, uh, ease of use have a security hurdles etc so we have certain challenges and also uh, certain advantages Uh, another uh, point is uh, application modernization one is uh, you can convert uh, retooling uh, reconstruction of application uh, infrastructure modernization all those things are part of it but uh, in our view uh, most important component is the back end operations as well as the processes we defined very often it creates challenges because legacy will be there the people who manage such things may not uh, uh, have adequate knowledge and skill to cope up with the modern uh, application and the journey of that application so it is uh, most important challenge within the organization is reequipping and also uh, train our workforce and internally and make it ready always uh, for making these changes uh, yeah, this is what uh, we feel in our organization and uh, there is no there is something called we have uh, completed modernization it is a consistent and continuous journey 
and uh, we have to uh, be in the continuous improvement program in this particular process. Uh, thank you, Mr. Balakrishnan. I would also like to introduce Mr. Uh, Sunil Sonare, who's joined us. He's CIO and CTO with Sabhav Engineering. So welcome, Mr. Sonare. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Sonare also to share his uh, views on you know, application modernization and where you are at with it. What are your views about that? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon, all of you. And you know that uh, uh, we are working in a, one of the most uh, uh, prominent in industries. You can say that infrastructure building across the country. And, uh, and you know that this construction industry is basically technology adoption is very less. And, but yes, there are a lot of challenging opportunities also there because we are working on some so many uh, some enterprise application, say um, this is uh, SAP, ERP, Salesforce, CRM, uh, some kind of the other applications, say for the SCM success factors, uh, as well as some kind of the um, a lot of uh, engineering applications that is based on Autodesk. And uh, uh, based on that, but we are working a uh, lot of things to do uh, in this scenario and a uh, lot of opportunity to modernize our entire uh, workforce as well as engineering team to get and uh, get the potential of the technology. So, and uh, we have done a lot of some kind of the modernization with respect to applications. Uh, we are running somewhere 10 different applications that is used by some of our external agencies, maybe some suppliers, uh, vendors, some customers, some of the other uh, people also. So then this is completely integrated with our SAP ERP applications. We have some other applications this, that is running, especially for the, some kind of the automations with respect to our material movement, some kind of the applications for the execution, operational issues, everything. And we have done very seamless integration with SAP and that helping our management also to get the entire operational uh, completely um, what's going on the operational issues or anything. So then they can do some kind of the better decision making and with respect to, and that is moving in the right directions. And uh, even with respect to this, uh, because this construction industry, as I told you, uh, being that adoption of the technology is uh, uh, not easy, but we are making simultaneously to make the people awareness what's going on in the near future. And nowadays, a lot of applications moving towards the say mobility, cloud adoptions and happening some of the applications, even that uh, providing, uh, even that SAP Fiori application, some of the applications we have been developed uh, through that uh, mobile apps, as well as some kind of the applications provided by the Autodesk where that uh, uh, you can have um, mobile apps facilities, then integration becomes very easy as well as that we are moving completely digital uh, organization. Right. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Sonare. So, uh, I, uh, I want to, uh, you know, inquire with you, you know, one of the points that was uh, uh, brought up by Mr. Balakrishnan was, you know, that there are a lot of challenges in app modernization. So, in your view, you know, what are the sort of main challenges when it comes to when you're doing app modernization? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, this is a basically a lot of challenges with respect to Number one, uh, this is a, something is security issues. This is the biggest challenges. So then, and then second one is that to uh, something our data governance kind of things. So then, what kind of the data you need? Because we have uh, different kind of the data with respect to because we need that data in it some different kind of the format. It's not a some kind of the data, whatever it is applicable with respect to uh, some kind of the numeric or digit or text or something. But even sometimes the data with respect to, um, say, pictures, images, video, uh, MP3 files, MP4 files also. So then we need that kind of the data and running that application also a challenges on mobile phones. So then keeping up with modernization, making that compatibility with the mobile devices, it's also that uh, 
some kind of the challenges and when you are it comes with respect to moving toward the performance side so then it making some kind of the um, cost effective also if he need that kind of the devices or something where that applications running very well so then you need to invest a lot of money on the mobile devices also but even we are working on that to reduce that cost also as well as but now uh, some kind of the even we can say that connectivity issues now that is a tremendously it change lot of uh, here in india since last 3 to 4 years so that challenges are gone now and even any persons even sitting in the remote locations also they can view they can upload the data everything is possible with this mobile devices uh, thank you so anand you can go ahead please yeah sure i think i mean uh, yes as sunil was saying i mean there are multiple areas and then again it is got another dimension to really think about it in terms of challenges in, with respect to what so i mean when you really look at your application portfolio strategy as keep was saying uh, there are different phases at which different types of applications are residing in and then when you are trying to really go from one level to the next i mean uh, the common challenge which comes in my mind first is the familiarization or engagement with your user groups first saying that like how closely you are connected for that uh, change that is coming up and the commitment from the business side to really look at the details to really make that change happen per se so that really start right from your requirement standpoint where you capture that to the brds and then it takes through all your phases of projects and then i really land up to the end point where it comes up for the adoption part of it so the first and the last piece is kind of a key in my mind that comes in basically looking at right giving at the right set of requirements to the right set of adoption of what you actually got it yeah thank yes, you sir so, yeah i think that you put it very nicely that looking at you know the input and the output and making sure that you know they match so often a challenge So, Mr. Prasad, I would like to ask you: What do you think are the principal challenges when it comes to application modernization? Yeah, I in my uh, environment, I see that uh, one is a culture has to be established. There has to be culture of uh, continuous uh, development, and basically, as the requirement of business uh, changes, uh, we keep on uh, changing those, bringing those changes uh, through. and definitely uh, uh, apart from the culture the second thing is uh, definitely the upskilling and reskilling uh, providing new skills to the existing it team uh, or also having good partners which we see the partners uh, where they can support in uh, uh, they can be our extended basically organization and they can work uh, harmoniously or collaboratively with our teams to uh, deliver the outcomes and uh, Uh, the third thing uh, which comes to my mind is uh, um, definitely the your uh, infrastructure or maybe the type of uh, environment in which you are going to deploy. For example, whether it's a hybrid cloud or a multi-cloud setup, and definitely you have to see the other things like security is definitely important. Compliances, how the data, where the data is residing, how the data is uh, backed up, and uh, uh, how you are able to uh, uh, standardize the. Uh, data across various applications so that the the api calls other things can be uh, managed well so these are the basic three things which i feel uh, obviously there are different uh, other aspects to it differently it comes right. to so uh, so what, what you have, if i could summarize you you said basically uh, we need the culture we need the skills and you know we need the technology yes. to be able to uh, do it properly is that correct right yeah thank Giri. you Giri, yeah, just go ahead ajay ji yeah see most important thing is why do you want to modernize is it just to catch up with the whole outside environment because there will never be a situation inside the enterprise that it will be able to catch up with the outside world there will never be let it be very clear and there is no need to be worried about it or getting odd about it because there is no organization which works at a pace at which outside world works so that is one reality we all have to accept and move with that number 2 what is driving you to modernize is it just that you need to catch up with the new trends that have come or is there a real need to do it it modernization of applications cannot be done one incident happened another incident happened let us go for modernization no 
somebody goes to a seminar he comes back from a conference hey guys let's modernize no it is a science you have to understand the impact of each and every stage and some of the generic thing master data management classification of data business rules has to be defined very clearly before any journey is taken and these are not challenges actually this is the environment hybrid cloud or public cloud or internal cloud where you will you store these are our companions these are not challenges this is the ecosystem in which we live day in and day out so those things should frankly not be a challenge of modernization as long as your road path is clear your vision is clear everybody is aligned to it it is clear so there are technical challenges and non technical challenges bringing business users on one page so far we were working like this now i don't know what will what will be the new one be will it lead to a job loss will it lead to efficiency enhancement means do i have to reskill so there is a resistance to reskill there is a resistance to adopt new features new things people got used to some things in so many ways so those are the type of environments in which we all have decided to work in so yes we need to happily take these things forward and make our organization application on the modernization path there is no end to it and of course it is a continuous journey there is no full stop these are just commas commas in a long journey for the business process uh, thank you ajay ji for a very optimistic view on things and you know you can always look at you know whether it's a challenge or an opportunity but still i would like to call upon one point which i think all the people who are on the b2c or retail side have made which is the need to sort of keep up with what is being demanded in the market and so while the need may not be internal but definitely the need is from a business perspective so navin what would you like to i would ask i would like to ask navin balakrishnan and narari to comment on that given that they are all from the more business yeah. b2c yeah. side right <laughs> so i want to challenge ajay and say no no it's required they don't sleep they don't sleep they keep eye on their competition what feature has been introduced i need to do that so <laughs> see from a b2c perspective why do you need to modernize like ajay ji said that you know of course it's an investment do you really want to make that investment the answer clearly is yes why modernization gives you agility today a monolithic application if there are 10 modules which are working in silos but integrated they give you a complete end to end business process yes. if you update a feature in one side you compile the entire app and you deploy the entire app modernization gives you the ability to work in agile pods you have different pods who have their own ci and cd pipelines they do their own releases without touching other aspects right and as in when you have traffic or the traffic or higher number of transactions going on a certain module only that module scales up others remain the same and that's the core essence of modernization and from a b2c perspective you always need that i'll give you an example for us say our new car division is car dek or use car division is gaadi today i have a huge surge of folks coming into gaadi stores and all of a sudden my auction engine goes up now i don't need to scale up the entire environment for my new car division because even in use car one segment is seeing a surge in traffic so i i deploy the right resources there in an auto scaling mode and where my containers spin up similarly if my inspection engine today undergoes a mammoth change only that code needs to be compiled and deployed and that too in a completely agile manner without without any intervention of someone from devops right so this is this is the biggest benefit that that you know that we as a b2c organization uh, get and now that makes our business very agile and uh, you know we roll out changes very very frequently that keeps us ahead of the competition and you know relevant in the market that's the reason why modernization in the b2c perspective something you can't live without right so are you doing 600 releases a day <laughs> not 600 but uh, definitely close to about 50 to 80 releases a week but oh, that's quite a lot yeah uh, i think it's very instructive that you know yeah. how certain organizations right. are working you know uh, is there any comment you wanted to add narhari to this i think yeah i think infrastructure, uh, infra- infrastructure scaling up and scaling down is considered as business hygiene so nobody tries to give that i think with respect to application modernization the biggest challenge is how do we create a customer flow 
and uh, each individual applications can work so just to give an example there can be a point of sale there can be an e-commerce there can be a brand site there can be a mobile app but how a customer can get a seamless multi channel experience so if you want to do that the biggest challenge is integration and if there is a systems which can speak to each other and take the complete flow from one point to another and seamlessly integrate that is when we can say that we have achieved the uh, application modernization that is one of the key challenges and when we try and create any new feature the biggest challenge is should we buy this feature should we build this feature so buy versus build is always going to be one of the key challenges that we need to understand and uh, there are pros and cons for each one of them but finally it has to fit into your framework whatever is your application landscape whatever is your information security landscape whatever is your kind of technology framework it has to fit and it has to well get integrated so i think the biggest challenge i feel is the integration and seamless working and scaling up scaling down is considered as a hygiene factor in the current technology trends that we are having so we give a lot of prominence for integration thank you so you know we are uh, sort of coming to the end of our time so i'd like to bring in sanjay you know so uh, sanjay maybe i can uh, he's the india sales leader for vmware tanzu and i'd like to ask him to you know he's been listening to the discussion very carefully so can you you know sort of sanjay summarize for us you know some of the points that we discussed and you know share your own views uh, <clears throat> sure mr gardhar i think we had a very interactive discussion where we heard all the leaders talk about why modernize and how they are going about modernizing applications i think the common thing which i heard from everybody was uh, we want to modernize to give a better experience to our customers uh, customers could be my own employees customers could be my ecosystem or customers could be my people who are buying my services and products because we want to ensure customers are happy they remain with us uh, they don't go away after getting frustrated that my site or application is not working and and scalability etc have become extremely important uh, i really liked what uh, narhari and mr balakrishnan said that application modernization is something which is uh, wip it never stops because what you achieve today uh, is going to be outdated tomorrow and today there are customers who are doing hundreds of releases on one application itself uh, not across their application farm but just in one application on a daily basis because that's the speed with which companies are trying to implement business idea in morning production ready by end of day uh, and and what motive i mean i was planning to show some slides uh, what ajay bakshi sir said kind of motivated me to change my flow of the slides i think application modernization should be done for business objectives it is it is not just another it project uh, which we do to kind of uh, get a tick mark because we attended an event uh, most of the customers we are seeing across the globe who are working with us they are kind of either saying we need extremely high stability or we need to bring in extremely high operational efficiency in our operations um, my personal favorite out here is something like wells fargo uh, who says that we repave our entire platform multiple times a week now that's the kind of security focus they are bringing in uh, wells fargo has more than 30000 virtual machines running in their environment and repaving that for a bank on a weekly basis kind of shows the amount of automation that they have brought in or if you look at t mobile uh, when apple iphone x was launched everybody went down including apple.com they said come back after 30 seconds we are facing technical challenges but t mobile didn't go down because they had rearchitected their application in the right way they had set up their platform and infrastructure in the right way and prepared for it and they handled record transactions that day without any manual intervention so those are the kind of business outcomes which people look at which organizations look at and then kind of say okay let's drive a completely st- complete strategy towards application modernization uh, that's something which is very very critical and more and more across the globe we are seeing customers are not doing app modernization as a it project but it is a business project with a line of business the ceo and the cio get together and say that it needs to be used as a competitive advantage for the business rather than just a cost center or an enabler now having said that 
it looks very easy to say that we are doing application modernization. Uh, we are kind of going on a container journey, but actually the journey is much more complicated than that. Uh, I'm sure some of the leaders on this uh, round table would kind of connect with this particular slide. Uh, but basically what we're trying to say is journey on application modernization or cloud native is extremely complicated. Um, if I talk briefly about this, uh, at the bottom you have multiple clouds, be it a public cloud, private cloud, or a combination of public clouds. And today teams require a unified experience to run their container applications across different clouds. Today I might get attracted to AWS because they are giving a particular capability or a pricing, but tomorrow GCP or Azure may come up with something which is more attractive for me. Am I going to be stuck to AWS just because I need, uh, just because I use some of their native capabilities? Answer definitely is no. I need to be able to move across clouds. Shifting gears towards the developer side, developers today want to use the best of open source projects which are available. And they would typically like to download it from something like a GitHub or a Docker repository. Now, is that safe for your organization? Do we know what is coming into this image which a developer is downloading? Or do we allow the developer to waste days and days of their time understanding the security implication of the image that they have downloaded? We need to kind of provide some system through which developers can be ensured that the image that they're using is secure. Now, once a developer has made their code, they want to convert that into a container. Extremely easy thing, yes, but it takes a lot of effort and time. Is that the right use of your developer's time? More importantly, imagine a condition on an important festival when you are already running on a thin team. Some important security patch comes. Are you going to wait for your developers to come back after break and say, I will apply the patches only once people are back? Or do you want the patches to be applied and new containers to be released in the system on the fly? Now, when you begin the journey, it's very easy. You have few containers running on one cloud. But as you start moving towards more complex applications, you want to use more power of containers, you would have a situation when you have different clusters of Kubernetes. How do you ensure that you have the right security policies across all your clusters that are there in the environment? Over a period of time, it's very normal for customers to have 20, 30, 50 clusters of Kubernetes. Can I afford a situation where I missed applying security patches say, to two or three of those clusters that I have. How do I ensure that my containers, which are in different clouds or different clusters, talk to each other in a secure manner? I think most of the leaders spoke about security being very important concern. Now, do we want our developers to spend time understanding security of container to container networking and the new concepts which are coming in cloud native programming? Or can we have a solution where all these things are taken care of by the platform or by the automation that we bring to the table? And last but not the least, very important, a uh, few years back, we all used to do application monitoring. Now, in the new world, that's not sufficient because the CEO demands that we have 100% uptime. We need to be able to establish correlations between different layers of our entire infrastructure, application, network, and predict that something like is going to happen likely, which will impact my business operations, and probably plan for preventive actions to ensure that nothing wrong happens. It's something like my routine health check. We all go to a hospital once in a while just to do routine health check to know that if something is going wrong, we take the right medicines and ensure we continue working the way we are working. In the same way, in the container world, you need to be able to monitor your entire application stack, infrastructure, network, and be able to take corrective actions around that. Now, yes, these things look very challenging, but fortunately for you at VMware, uh, we have solutions for each of these steps. Uh, in interest of time, I will not go into the yeah, details. Yeah, we've sort of run out. We've run over time, so I just wanted, we didn't want to stop you. So I'll just take a minute on this slide if that's yeah, okay. Just one minute, please, because we are over time and we, the next session is starting. Sure. So. so that's a complete modular range of solutions from VMware, uh, which allows you to automate different stages of your application lifecycle management. And you can decide as to what is your business priority and look at solutions only for that. This is not a monolithic solution to solve your problems of microservices-based applications. This is a completely modular platform that we have where you can pick and choose what capabilities you want to automate and move ahead with that. 
we would be glad to connect with you offline and take this discussion forward. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody, for your time and inputs. Uh, thank you so everybody. much, Sanjay, uh, for you know explaining you know uh, so for sort of summarizing all the challenges into you know three neat slides and then pr is proposing a solution. I'd encourage all of you to you know uh, connect to Sanjay if you are interested in uh, you know taking forward the conversation on application modernization. We'll be happy to help. Uh, meanwhile, uh, may my thanks to everyone for sharing your perspectives on the topic of finding your path to application modernization. It was a, lo a lovely conversation. I think we had some very interesting ideas. And I was hoping we'd have more fights, but we did. But thank you so much. <laughs> have a, a great day. And with that, we'll come to the end of today's session. Thank you, Giri. Thank you. Thank Fantastic you, session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.